Yo, what's up? We are now sitting in a 2021 Tesla Model 3 with heat pump. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what happens when you preheat it. So prior to shooting this video, I let the car sit outside, not in the garage, but outside overnight. Uh, so everything would cool down, the battery, interior, everything. And I think it was around two, two three degrees Celsius outside. So, all right, you see here, uh, to the left here, we have got my Tesla with lots of variables. And the middle is the thermal camera, FLIR, and then to the right here we have uh, the, the app. And the bottom right, I also measured um, the th uh, temperature inside. And the 97 you see there, that's the, the humidity, but the, the sensor was uh, put on the top uh, over the, the sun visor. I wanted to measure temperature on, on the roof. And you can actually also see in the center there that that's the camera recording the uh, the temp temperature. So uh, let's just roll it now. See, I started everything and then I went outside the car and I also uh, locked it so that uh, the the F power and the R power, you see, that's that's the, um, the I call it the afterburners, the, the way Tesla heats up the battery. So it, it actually sucks a lot of power. You see, it, it pulls 11 kilowatt initially to, to heat up the car quickly, but also to heat up the battery at the same time. And then you see that, uh, interestingly, um, the climate temperature in the app reports it to, to rise quite quickly. Uh, it seems like only after five minutes you reach 20 degrees Celsius, but uh, the thermal camera shows differently. It shows that it's only around 10 degrees Celsius. And also the, the roof sensor also shows that it's only 12 degrees Celsius. So I think we can trust those two sensors because, <laughs> and then why does the car report 21 then? Yeah, maybe it's just deceiving that uh, it tricks the user into to believing that it's 21. And also uh, my own experience is that when I enter the car, if I preheat the car only 10 minutes and it was really soaking uh, coal inside the car, then even after 10 minutes, it's not really that warm inside the car. You probably need to keep it longer, but okay. What else should we say here? You see, it's still, still pulling 10 kilowatt. Uh, still, now it's actually the front and the afterburners are pulling almost 7 kilowatt, but I'm not, not in that. But I believe that also the heat pump is helping heat up the battery at the same time as, yeah. So, yeah, I forgot to mention, but the, the, the battery was pretty cold. But you see, uh, I get the impression that this car heats up the battery faster than the old one. Maybe because the heat pump also helps it uh, heat it up. So, maybe I should do a direct comparison to see how fast the new car heats up the battery versus the old one but now also another thing to observe is that you see the climate went according to the app i mean the climate has been steadily sitting at 21 degrees celsius but with the still when you look at the camera the FLIR camera and my own sensor on the roof you see that that tells a different story so i don't know if this is a way of cheating it or if the sensor in the car uh, that reports that uh, app temperature is kind of weird or whatever, but um, now it actually goes beyond 23 degrees. We are getting close to 24, yeah, yeah see 22, 20, uh, 23, 24 degrees now, but the car still reports 21. It seems like, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the temperature was set to 21 degrees. And <laughs> I don't know really why Tesla reports 21. It should actually report 24, 25, but th that might be, uh, maybe confusing for some people. They're like, hey, what the heck is wrong with the car? Because I set it to 21, but then it's 25 in, inside the car. Uh, another thing, yeah, I missed it. Um, you see the afterburner shut down after a little while and it only heated up to 17 degrees Celsius. This was this is weird because other times when I heated up the battery, it went up to 28, 29 degrees before it stopped. So it's a big mystery why it uh, only heated it up to 17 degrees, really. But another thing you would notice is that even after half an hour, the car is still pulling almost four kilowatt and this is not four kilowatt into the cabin cabin doesn't need that much power so i suspect that it's still doing something to try to heat up the battery but it doesn't seem like the temperature in the battery is rising that much actually now now the battery inlet is lower than the the cell temp so that means that it might also be sucking a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. at this point, you see, when the power drops, oh, and then it goes up and down again, so that's kind of weird. But you see, actually, <laughs> the temperature in the interior, or at least near the air vent, or whatever the, the FLIR camera is measuring, there is almost 30 degrees Celsius. And also on the roof, it measures 27 degrees Celsius. So, but on the other hand, if you sit inside a car, you will not feel like it's 27 or 30 degrees Celsius. It will usually be nice and, okay, someone called me, that's why, uh, 
it would usually be nice and warm inside so, so it seems like this car has been tuned for what uh, the western people like it uh, so 21 degrees celsius will usually feel like rough, roughly you know, 20 21 22 for most people so they, they people who use this car they will not feel like oh it's too hot or or oh it's too cold so that's just the way it's been it's been tuned okay that was i i didn't record more than that so uh it was it was interesting to see what happens inside the car and and so on but um maybe i should have kept going because i noticed something is that uh, it was still pulling a lot of power uh, significant power because you guys have seen it when i tested it when i preheated the battery in the cabin and i tested consumption it was usually pulling only 500 watts to maintain heat in the in the cabin but when i when i think i didn't notice it but when we stopped it was still pulling one and a half or two kilowatt which is actually kind of high so uh, but I, I wasn't sure how long I was supposed to measure this, but I stopped after about 45 minutes. But, you know, uh, that makes me wonder how long do we actually have to preheat the car before it goes into the resting power draw? Maybe we need at least an hour. So this is also very useful for me and maybe for you guys. If you want to properly heat up the cabin, you might need about an hour. This is what I've seen over and over again. Oh, oh the light in the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a timer base, but that's this is what I've seen over and over again. That um, uh, you uh, okay uh, if you just a 15 minute preheat is okay, but uh, the seat and and the and the steering wheel and everything will still feel a little bit cold. But then after half an hour, you should usually get decent comfort in the car. And then after an hour, if you really want to tweak it, you know, before you go on a long trip and you know you need to save energy, then maybe you should preheat about one hour and then that should be then the car should be nice and warm because remember that uh, like the car's sensor reported and inside the app that even after just five minutes then it reports 21 degrees i think the sensor should be down in the middle console somewhere at least that's where the snx had the sensor it doesn't take more than about five minutes to heat up the air in here but then the air here will have to uh, heat up the rest of the cabin and that takes a long time that's just how physics works but uh, yeah so anyway um interesting to see um maybe i should do the same thing with uh, with mc hammer my tesla model 3 with ptc heater but i don't think they heat up uh, differently they, uh, my impression with this car versus my own old car with ptc is that they seem to heat up around the same time. I think the only difference is that uh, this car heated up more efficiently, that's it. But uh, comfort-wise and so on, it shouldn't be the same. And also, yeah, uh, also, it also seems like the heat comes really fast in the Tesla, like you guys probably see. You guys can always rewind and go back to the video and try to see what happens. But I don't remember which car it was. Uh, maybe it was the e-tron that uh, yeah i i think it was written i mean uh, correct me if i'm wrong but it was one of those other cars i tried uh with heat pump that took really long to <laughs> sorry that when you started the car and you started driving the car still felt a little bit cold it seems like the heat pump in some other cars are a bit slow they need maybe several minutes before they start generating heat but it seems like in a tesla the heat comes fast even if the car was soaked overnight outside in cold weather so that's what i can conclude so far yeah so um maybe i will do more tests i'm not sure what kind of test you guys want me to do uh but okay i think that's gonna be it for now hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later